In this tutorial, we shall set a project to use SQL Server as our database. You can obtain this project from the downloads attached to this video. But still I recommend that you go through this tutorial to ensure that everything is set up correctly on your specific machine. You might have to substitute your own connection string also. So go through the whole tutorial. I shall be using Visual Studio. First of all, create an empty ASP.NET Core project. No folders are created for us. So we have to add a folder called models to hold our model classes. You will also have to install the NuGet package for SQL Server and EF Core. And run this command on the package manager console. Next, open the SQL Server object explorer by using the menu view SQL Server Object Explorer and locate a running instance. In my case, it is Project Models. Right click to open the properties. Then locate connection string in the properties window. Copy this connection string. We will use it in our next steps. Right click the models folder and add a class called item. It adds a file called item.cs. Double click and open this file so that we can view the source code. First we have the namespaces. Then we have added a model class called item. This class contains name and price as properties. We have also added an invoice model to the same file to hold invoices. This model has been added so that we have a foreign key from the item model. The primary key of the item table is the foreign key here. So we have a good relationship here and this is just a tutorial. So we have kept all the possibilities that are possible. And lastly, we have the DB context. The constructor ensures that the database is created. If you get a runtime exception at this point, then you should check the connection string. We shall be adding this connection string in the program.cs file also. The same connection string that you copied earlier will be added in the program.cs file later on. And lastly, we have added the items and invoices properties for DB set. And next let us complete the program.cs file. First of all, we have the namespaces. Then we obtain the web application builder as a builder object. Logging is important when we study and measure performance. But logging can become too heavy also. So we can either set log level to none or we can remove all log providers. I will take the second option. So let's clear all the log providers so that we do not get a very big log. We shall add them on need basis whenever required. The default log is too bulky. So we have removed everything at this point because we will want to know only the SQL specific logs. We will add them later on as per our requirements. Next add a service for razor pages builder.services.add razor pages. After this add the DB context service and set the connection string. We could have stored this connection string in the app settings configuration file also and then used the get connection string function to access it. But we just wanted to keep the things simple. So we have hard coded everything here. And finally builder.build gives us the web application. Map razor pages is called and the application is run. And next we have to add some data to our database. We have to do the seeding. Open the solution explorer and add a folder called pages and then a razor page called index as you are seeing here. Double click and open the index CSHTML file. Let's examine the markup. First we have the three directives for page tag helpers and model. Then we shall show a feedback message in a mark tag so that we, we get it colored. Mark tag actually shows prominently so that is why we have used it so that we can see the message in a colored way. Although this is not the HTML technically correct thing to do. But since we wanted some prominent colors so we have used a mark tag. 
After this, we have an anchor link connected to a handler called seed. And next, let us have a look at the backing class. Double click and open it so that we can see the source code. First, we have the namespaces. Then we have the backing class index model. The constructor obtains the project context through dependency injection. The property public string message is used to display the feedback message on the riser page in the mark tag that we saw just now. The code for seeding is in the seed async function. This function is connected to the anchor on the CSHTML file that we saw just now. An if condition checks if the items table contains any records. If so, the message already seeded is shown. Next, a loop is used to add 10 item records and save the changes to the database await ctx.savechanges async. After that, a for each loop runs and adds 10 invoices for each of the items added above, so it contains 100 invoices. And finally, the changes are saved and a message set as done seeding. Now run the project and allow the home page to open. First check the console window. It should be blank because we removed all loggers in the program.cs file. And next click the click to seed button and allow the seeding to take place. If everything goes fine, you should see the message done seeding. Next open the SQL Server object explorer and verify that the invoices and items tables, they contain their data. In our next tutorial, we shall start with the performance steps. Thank you.